Hey guys, in this video, what I want to do is some basic optimizations. So one, I don't want the ping to be visible permanently. and I don't want it to be ticking permanently. I want it to have some kind of fade. So like after, let's say you ping, and then 15 seconds later, the ping fades out. And that way it's invisible. Once it's invisible, I don't want it to be running the logic on tick anymore. I want it to completely quit. So that's kind of what we're going to be focused on in this video. And maybe the next one is just purely optimization stuff. So starting with optimization, first thing we can do is actually alter our lifetime replicated props because we don't need this to replicate to everybody. Instead, we only need it to replicate to the owner. So we're going to change drep lifetime to drep lifetime underscore condition. And the condition is going to be and owner only. So that way it only replicates to the owner of this character because it's really not needed otherwise. So that takes care of a little bit of networking stuff. Next up, we want to actually have some kind of way to awaken, so to speak, our ping. So what we're going to have in here is a simple replicated property. So you property. This one's going to be replicated using because I want it to be an event. Then we're going to do void on rep. Or sorry, not void on rep. We're going to do bool. Let's do a B active. Then we're going to have a U function. And this is going to be our on rep. So void on rep underscore active. And paste that in there. So let's go ahead and create our on rep function. I'm going to move it below begin play. Actually below tick as well. And we need a get lifetime replicated props function. So I'm going to copy this whole thing and paste it over right below begin play in our ping. Let's change the class to be a ping. Uh, this is going to have the condition of everybody. So remove the condition. We want the variable to be b active, and we need to include the Unreal Network. So hashtag include net Unreal Network. And that'll quit that, uh, get that to quit complaining. Okay. Next up, in the onwrap active, we need to do a chat of like a check here. So if b active, what do we want to do? Otherwise, what do we want to do? So I know when we're not active, I want to disable tick. So set actor tick enabled to false. And then when we are active, I want to set it to true. And I also want to hide and unhide accordingly. So here, I also want to disable tick for that initial time too. So we want it to be, you know, tick enabled. We also want to set actor tick enabled equals false. And then actually, I think there's an option for starting with tick. Okay, B, start with tick enabled. So can be disabled later on. So we want to set this to false. So that way we can remove the set actor tick enabled. And I want to run a print string. Or not a print string, but a log. And let's call it ticking. So that way we can kind of keep track of when we are and are not ticking. All right, so that kind of sums up the basics of that. Because I'm doing some replication stuff, I want to be safe and just close the editor down. So we have our ping. Here we run everything, we set the actor location. And what we can do in here is call the, well, we need a way to trigger it being active. So let's do a bool function or a void function. So void set active. And here we're going to do bool b, let's just call it b is act. Here, let's see, b set active. That's really kind of crappy naming, but it'll work for this case. So inside of set active, I'm not going to do any sort of authority check, mostly because I want to actually be able to uh, trigger this from the client as well. So either way, what we do is set b active to equal b set active, and we're going to call the on rep active function. So we want to trigger that either way. So now all we have to do is from here, we can simply do ping actor set active to true. And then move that down to the server guy or the server function here and do the same thing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit play and make sure this all works, and then we will get into a discussion of what all has, well, happened. All right, so I'm back in the editor. I went ahead and docked the output log, and let's just kind of see. So I'm going to play with one client first. So I ping. Now it says ticking. So when I start, nothing is ticking, so we know we're good to go there. Let's just, uh, now we want to also do something as well later on. We'll actually do that in a bit. Let's try two clients, make sure that it's actually still working. So I ping, still works. And everything's still good to go. Okay, so now that we have that, we know we're good to go. Our ticking is set up. Uh, we want to kind of set up like an auto disable, so to speak. So kind of like a uh, way to disable the ticking after X amount of time has elapsed. So we can actually run this solely on the server because we do have it set up to replicate. And we're also going to want to set it up in here so we can kind of hide and unhide. So for the set actor tick enabled, we want to unhide the actor. So set actor hidden in game, and that's going to be false. And we don't want to fully, well, kind of do and kind of don't. Uh, I don't know if there's an easy way to set the opacity without modifying the material itself, so I'm not going to be worried too much about that, but then in the, when we uh, set it to not active, we want to actually hide it. So we have this set up. Now as you can see, there's kind of like a repeat of code. So how can we clean this up? Well, we have our boolean here. We know what we need to do with it. So when it's active, we need to set the actor tick enabled to true. So true, true. Then set actor hidden in game, true, false. So we want this to be equal, not be active. Copy, paste, and you're done. Kind of cleaned up a good bit. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually adjust the, you know, the interval at which it ticks. So let's prime actor tick dot a certain interval. There is. So we can set the tick interval right here. So let's set the tick interval to be. And see, we can do like 60 times a second might be enough. So 1 divided by 60 and see the result. Actually, I don't even know if that's going to properly change in the blueprint. You see the tick interval? Yeah, that's what I kind of figured. So let's restart the editor. Okay, so back in our editor, we have our time interval set to 0. 1, 6, blah, blah, blah. That's our delay, so it only runs 60 times a second. So if I click, still see everything runs, and it looks still pretty smooth. However, instead of running every single frame, it's only running, uh, you know, 60 times a second. So I think by default it's locked at 120, and it's when we're having it. So you can probably reduce it a good bit farther and do something like 30 as well. But it's kind of up to you to figure out what you want. So we have our ticking set up. That's all good to go there. Now we want to kind of have some sort of way to delay. So not to delay, but when we start our ticking, we want to be able to end it. So that way we kind of perform our on rep here. So we hide it as well. So how can we want to do that? Well, the easiest way is going to be simply set a timer in our on rep function that basically sets the active to false. And at the same time, that's going to fire for everybody else because be active is replicated. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. Now that's gonna wrap this one up. So if you like what I'm doing and you wanna help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a team deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below. I'm just disabling motion blur. And I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.